It's election season in the United States right now, and we have all been following what's going on in the American presidential run. In case you have watched the first debate between Trump and Biden, you might have an idea of what politics gets down to sometimes. But what happens in Brazil? Is it the same here? Do debates get rough between Brazilian candidates? I don't know. Well, on this video here, we're going to show you how the Brazilian electoral system works, the number of political parties, how fast it is to get the results, and much more, right after the intro. Don't go anywhere. Hello, this is Mark Saint and this is Brazil in Subtitle, your channel to get to know all you ever wanted to know about Brazil, but in English. If this is your first time on the channel, subscribe to receive content related to Brazil right to your cell phone or computer. The United States elections are marked by the fierce competition between Democrats and Republicans, the two major political parties in America. There are other political parties and candidates, but they never get to have real chances of winning. Well, in Brazil, things are way different, as you will learn now with the one and only Brad Zucca. Hello, Mark. The National Congress or Congresso Nacional in Brazil has two chambers. The Chamber of Deputies or Câmara dos Deputados in Portuguese has 513 members elected to a four-year term by proportional representation. The Federal Senate, Senado Federal, has 81 members elected to an eight-year term with elections every four years for alternatively one-third and two-thirds of the seats. Brazil has a multi-party system with such numerous parties that often no one party has a chance of gaining power alone. And so, they must work with each other to form coalition governments. While the United States possesses around five political parties, but is ultimately represented by only two, Brazil has got 33 different parties registered in the TSE, the Brazilian Supreme Electoral Court. Nevertheless, disputes are usually concentrated in the two most popular parties, PT of former President Lula and PSDB of former President Fernando Henrique Cardoso, considered one of the founders of our currency, Real, which has been in use since 1994. The elections of 2018 brought about some change to the monopoly of the political dispute, for the then candidate and current president Jair Bolsonaro came from a small party called PSL. Even though the president is no longer a member of PSL today, the party had expressive voting in the last election of 2018, having elected more than 50 congressmen and four senators. And we all pay the bill. The ballot in Brazil is secretive and direct. Voters choose a specific candidate for each position to be filled, and their choice is kept confidential. Blank and void votes are not considered valid votes by the electoral justice system, and therefore discarded for vote counting purposes. Brazil uses two different systems, the majority and proportional, to define the winners of the election depending on the office being elected. All executive positions, the president, governors and mayors, and senate are decided according to the majority system, in which the candidate with the most votes win. The remaining votes, for example, those for the chamber of deputies and municipal and state legislature, are decided according to the proportional system. President and governor races also follow the two-round system, in which a runoff election occurs when no candidate obtains more than half of valid votes, excluding the blank and the void votes, of course. If that happens, the top two contenders compete again in another election round. In the proportional system, in a quick summary, 
the votes are distributed proportionally among the computing political parties. Elections in Brazil usually happen every four years, but as we have to choose two different groups, it means Brazilians will be casting ballots every two years, like this. In one year, Brazilians will be voting for president, for governor, for state and federal district parliament members. So, in Portuguese, presidente, governador, deputados estaduais e federais, and also senators, I forgot, senadores. In another year, like this year, for example, 2020, Brazilians will be electing mayors and city councillors. Another important thing to say is that voting in Brazil has been held with the use of electronic machines since 1996. Voting is legally mandatory in Brazil. Every citizen over the age of 16 is automatically eligible to vote, and those over 18 are required to do so, facing a trivial fine for failing. They are free to vote for none of the candidates or leave their ballot blank, but it is a legal duty to be there. Still, in the last election, roughly 20% of voters violated that law and abstained from voting. But that means that 80% of the adult population voted, a far higher participation rate than any election in the United States. Brazil's election system is designed to maximize, not suppress, voter participation. All citizens are automatically registered. Voting is mandatory. The elections are held on Sundays, ensuring that working people have the fewest barriers to voting, instead of the middle of the week. Machine voting is uniform throughout the country's 27 states. Voters are registered many months before the election is held to guarantee efficiency and quality to the elections. There is also a new fingerprinting recognition system being implanted to the voting machines at the moment. So voter will just have to collect their thumbprint to be able to cast a ballot. Furthermore, efficiency seems to be the word when it comes to elections in Brazil. Take the 2018 election that elected President Bolsonaro, for instance. Like all Brazilian elections, the October 7 national vote was held on Sunday, the day the fewest number of people have to work, ensuring maximum voter participation. Polling closed at 5 p.m. All of the votes were fully counted and all the results fully known by 8.30 p.m. of that same night. There were no lingering unknown outcomes. Weeks of uncounted votes, widespread claims of voter disenfranchisement, multi-hour lines that spread around blocks and or obstacles to registering. The October 28th runoff, which elected Jair Bolsonaro as president and also decided the runoff races for governor in multiple states, was even smoother. Votes are electronically counted all day, but the totals are not released until the last poll closes. By the time the last state closed its polls at 6 p.m., more than 90% of the votes were already counted and the totals were instantly released. Thus, the outcomes of the presidential race and most of the gubernatorial races were known within minutes after the polls closed and they were all fully determined within two hours of the polls closing. Have you ever been to Brazil during an election period? What was the experience like? Please comment here so that I can get to know your story. How do elections work in your country? Also comment here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to receive more content about Brazil and get to know more about this country as you have never imagined before. Thanks for watching and see you next time.